friends, this is Michael Canadas with the Carmel Doll Shop and the Grovian Doll Museum. We are going to look at some wonderful candy containers from the collection of Miss Paula. Um, first, I should point out that the abundance of candies and sweets that we have today would be completely foreign to people of the 19th century, early part of the 20th century and, and, and backwards. Um, to get a little sweet was considered a real treat and a delicacy. And because of that, the presentation of said sweets, whether they be hard candies or chocolates, was really to be celebrated as something quite special. So here we can see a, really a cross section of items from Paula's collection of, of various genres. She has a big collection, so I had to, to narrow it down um, to, to what I could show um, for all of you. And I think I'll start with the, the big guns um, first, which would be the French fashion doll lady. So we can only guess, was she a wedding gift? Was she a souvenir for all the wedding uh, guests received uh, such an item or special gift, gift for the bride? We do not know. Or it could even be a presentation for the ring because here you can see she's got a full upper body, but the lower body is the tube and then the tube would hold this, this purple sack. And that's where the candies would go, uh, which I, I think it's a, a, definitely a candy container, but it could be used for other things too. And she's a beautiful uh, Gautier doll with a wonderful, oh, probably 18, right on 1880s wedding dress. The next piece we'll have a, the next piece we'll have a look at is this wonderful boot. Um, clearly it is uh, a jockey's boot. And of course in the 19th century, horse racing was very, very popular. And I'm gonna turn it so that you can see the wonderful uh, jockey head that's poking out of the, the side of the boot. And he's busting through with his arm. It's a beautiful a paper mache piece that's covered then with leather stretched over it and then a silk top with a little sack, drawstring sack at the top. Um, just a really wonderful piece. And we have to ask ourselves, what was this for? Was this um, for a jockey or was it for someone that loved racing? Uh, would it have been a special piece for a, a, a celebration? We don't know, but it, it really is a fabulous piece. And because of the French arm and the French Head, we can assume that this was a French product, where most of the, the items in the candy container line, uh, we, we usually associate with Ger German. Now we'll have a look at a classic German candy container uh, representing the pug dog. Pugs were very popular in the 19th century and early 20th century in children's literature, and decorative art pieces. I think that they lend themselves to comedy and usually they're doing things like, oh, tearing apart a doll or tearing apart punch. And here we just have a, a very well-fed um, uh, pug. You can see there's his um, opening to get into the can. The candy would go into his body and then he has a, just a doll shoe in his mouth. And these make wonderful accessories to go in uh, doll tableaus. Um, they're not easy to find these days, but well worth it uh, to add to your collection. And it's a very smooth composition. If you can see, some of the composition in the candy containers are lumpy, but this has a, a nice smoothness to it. Can I tell you who made them? No, I cannot, but I think that at some point that information will, will reveal itself to all of us. Candy containers can take all forms. Here we have a little page boy hat in blue silk. 
that you would, could certainly use for a doll, but if you flip it over, guess what? It's a little candy container, drawstring uh, container, and these are often put on uh, Christmas trees in, in their time and in our time, but this one, which is meant to only last a day, could easily be used on a doll. So that's a wonderful genre to collect. There's all different forms, pretty much just about anything you would be interested in, uh, you can find it in a candy container. Here's another candy container that is in the form of a boater, which was a very popular um, headwear for both ladies and gentlemen. And this is a beautiful uh, matte um, finish to it with little woven reed almost to scale. And then you turn it over and, oh, excuse me, it would be the crown. This comes off and that is where the candies would be kept. So you could give this as a gift to someone who loves the outdoor life because this would be a hat that you would wear out of doors doing uh, sporty type things. But I do believe it's feminine in nature because if you notice the band on it is floral. Musical instruments are a regular theme in candy containers. You can find violins, guitars, uh, um, you know, here we have, I, I believe it's a little mandolin. I could be wrong, um, but it has beautiful colors. Sorry, I didn't mean to flip that on you. Uh, beautiful colors, wonderful um, lithograph paper. And I think this would technically go into the genre of um, Dresden's. It's a type of um, ornament that you can find on, on on Christmas trees and whatnot, but um, they weren't just for Christmas season. This could have been an Easter gift. And we need to do a little bit of gluing. I can see something's come undone. And as one wise person told me many years ago, when we started to collect, her advice was to us was learn to glue. Kitties were a very popular subject matter for candy container makers. Here you can see we have our Easter cat that is hatching from an egg, which I, uh, that's news to me, but evidently you can hatch kittens out of eggs. And it's a very beautiful piece with a wonderful little face. And it's trying hard to shake that little shell. And then the candy would be stored into the, the egg part. And then we have kind of an unusual black cat, which we don't see black uh, cats in candy containers too often because the black cat has been unlucky for um, many centuries now. But clearly this is a little girl cat because she's got a, a mop cap on and a little blue bow, which blue was the feminine color of the 19th century, pretty much most of it. And the candy, again, would be stored up in the, in the head and this little opening would open and you could fill it with all kinds of candies. Cats and dogs are a very interesting genre to collect in candy containers. I think that this frog candy container is perhaps one of Paula's rarest candy containers in her collection. Not only is it a rare figure, it's in outstanding condition, almost like it was made and then put away, and it's very naturalistic. Now, why you would give someone a frog as a gift with candy in it, unless you're perhaps Cinderella and this is a wonderful prince, we don't know. But maybe it was for a boy that loved the outdoor life, there has to be some significance to it, but we're not really sure. And again, this is composition. It's a beautiful quality material, very smooth and very finely painted with the classic little glass eyes, but a great little piece. And of course, this is for someone who has a little sense of humor because you don't really expect to have candy in a frog. I would assume that the candy would be then hard candies and probably green. 
some of the most beautiful candy containers that you're going to find are going to depict the Easter Bunny. So here we have uh, three different types of bunnies. The center, we have the classic hair type bunny, Germanic, probably 1890s, turn of the century, hyper-realistic. And this is a young bunny, not, not um, they do come bigger than this. So this, this is a fairly young life-size bunny, but beautiful composition that's flocked. Again, these were not made to be here 100 years later. So, you know, you will find on uh, these types of candy containers, you'll find repairs and ears that have been put back on. It's a very um, primitive type of, of paper mache composition, but they are beautiful and I think very festive for the spring season. Then you have uh, a German, German doll, little child doll, riding a plush covered um, bunny. So this would be a really large bunny if it were in real life with a just a cute little um, simple German head. Again, these were not an expense, this, this particular piece, they were not expensive. So they had simplistic little legs and whatnot and um, not the greatest definition of, a, of features on the rabbit, but again, very charming and fun to collect, available uh, out there, but not as much as they used to be. And then here we have a very realistic uh, Jaeger um, hunter um, uh, bunny, and he's on his hinds. And I think it's interesting that he's wearing a hat and he has a vasculum. So perhaps he's out there collecting specimens. Um, this one, the head comes off and the candy is in the body, as is the large um, re hyper realistic, and as is the um, writable um, uh, bunny. But these are what you're going to find mostly. Uh, in candy containers will be the season of Easter. But there really wasn't any holiday in the 19th century and early 20th century that there wasn't some form of a candy container. Whether it be Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day, they all, um, very quickly, the, the manufacturers realized that uh, holidays were to be celebrated and there was product to be sold. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Miss Paula's wonderful collection of candy containers. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.